Well, hello, hello, young and the restless daily recap fans. I have to turn my camera on. Uh, today's daily recap is for Friday, December the 16th, 2022. Friday, December the 16th. Please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you have been here twice, it's time to subscribe, okay? So you can get notifications on all the different things that, you know, the different recaps that I do, the pictures that I share, uh, just subscribe. Okay, today did not move that much, but if summer doesn't know it, the handwriting is definitely, definitely on the walls for her where her husband is concerned and who in fact is going to be winning winning uh, in the Kyle's Heartstrings department, okay? I'm going to get to that just a little bit later. First, I'm going to go to, guess what, guys? Another movie night. Yet another movie night. This is twice in one week. Hmm. You know, it's going to actually get to the point to where Billy's going to be knocking on the door and Billy's going to say, hey, Chels, it's time for General Hospital. <laughs> hey, we got to watch our daily soap because he has nothing else to do, right? So they can watch their daily soap and talk, talk, talk about it. Because it's good, you know. She so can laugh out loud. He tell her how she need to laugh more because it's good for her soul. I mean, oh my goodness. You know, Connor spending so many nights out at Friends, he would be livid and pissed if he knew Billy was coming over this much. Just sitting there that relaxed. You know, you don't see him cross his arms not once with Chelsea. Okay, but the, the funny thing is, in another two months Billy would be bored with Chelsea once Chelsea gets on the amends and she's really getting more independent actually once Chelsea actually goes out back out to work you know whether she decides to to develop her fashion line and get her whatever she does once she becomes independent because see she really hasn't stepped outside her house yet and she talked to Sharon about that and Sharon is like, Chelsea, it's time for you to, you know, step out into the world. And she goes, no, everything is just so, so scary and strange to me, you know, that she's, she's afraid. Like she wouldn't even accompany Connor to the park because it's just overwhelming to her right now. So Chelsea says, my, my therapist is saying, I need to start with baby steps. She says, I have some errands I need to run. Normally I get Adam or, or Billy to do the errands for me, but I, I'm, my therapist says errands, they would be great baby steps for me. And she goes, I'm still afraid. Well, she gets Adam or Billy to do them for her. In this case, why don't you ask to go along? Say, listen, I'm struggling going out by myself. I need to go to... Vons, Kroger, Walmart, Target. I need to go and pick up some stuff. Can you drive me? That will at least get her out in public with someone she knows as a security blanket. Or she could have even said, Sharon, perhaps if you have some free time, maybe you could accompany on my first errand. And Sharon will be like, hey, let's go now. She tell whoever her worker is at the Crimson, I mean, Crimson Lights, yeah. Hey, I'll be back in an hour. Come on, Chelsea, let's go. But that would at least get her out into the open air, into the sunlight. And, you know, so we'll see, you know, how those baby steps are going to start to unfold. But look, if Billy had his way, he would definitely... Uh, be you know monopolizing all her evenings and then adam shows up with some presents right for connor he goes look i know it's early but i wanted to get you know put i'm not done but i wanted to put some of these bring some presents over and so billy stands up because he goes oh i guess i could have called or should have called and and billy 
Billy's like, oh, well, I'm leaving. Well, because the movie was over, right? Billy was on his way out anyway. So Chelsea's like, oh, no, no, you know, he's leaving. So Billy walks out the door and Adam comes in with these bags and he goes, I'm not done, but I thought maybe you could put them on. She goes, no, that's a great idea. Connor will love it, right? She was happy about it. And Billy goes downstairs and um, he's leaning against the table. See, like this. And Lily walks in and they sit down at a booth and she goes, what's going on? How's Chelsea? Oh, she's fine. We were watching a movie and I'm thinking, okay, right? Uh, watching a movie, we were doing her laundry. I was helping her clean the oven, uh, you know, anyway. Um, and, you know, but then Adam showed up and, and get this, Billy says, Adam shows, showed up and oozed misery or oozed his misery. And I just don't think that's good for Chelsea right now. And Lily looked at him and she said, um, or do you think, you know, sounds like you think you're the only one good for Chelsea right now. And he looked at her like, well, what's that? Huh? And when he said, Adam showed up and oozed misery. I'm sorry, fellow recap fans. Did you get that vibe from Adam at all? With his bags of Christmas presents in both hands coming in. Presents for his son, right? Probably got one in there for Chelsea too. Even when he saw Billy sitting there, he didn't. He just says, oh. He looked like, wow, again, but he didn't say anything about it. He didn't even snipe at Billy. He didn't even scowl at Billy as Billy walked by. He didn't. He walked on in, Chelsea closed the door, and they're talking about presents for Connor. So I was like, where on earth in what virtual reality did Adam ooze any kind of misery on Chelsea? See, that right there. That right there is telling you how wrong Billy is. That right there. So anyway, they're talking and he goes, you know what? Do I detect a bit of, and Lily said, resentment? Yeah, a little, yeah. She was honest. He goes, yeah, mm -hmm, a little. And then they got to talking and she was saying that, you know, Billy, they can't fix this on their own. And she doesn't have the time or the energy to try to fix it on their own. She says, I feel we need to go to couples counseling, you know, to help somebody give us some skills to work with, to help us, you know, get back to each other. You know, how do you feel about that? And Billy looked at her and he honestly said, you know what, Lily, after the holidays, Yes, I'm agreeable to it. And I was like, okay. Billy wants to work on it. Okay, I, I was liking his answer. And she reached across the table and she grabbed his hands and she said, thank you. You know, thank you. Now, if when they make their couple scheduling sessions, he says, ooh, ooh, Lily. Goodness, Pinocchio's coming on TV and Chelsea and I got movie night. Oh, no, that, no, no, no. That's no good for me. Or, oh, mm, I wanted to take Chelsea to the park on this afternoon that you got scheduled for this session. That's not going to be good for me. See, we'll see. He said yes, but we'll see if they actually make it there we'll see you know that's my thing is okay you said yes but let's see if you actually make it there um now we have let's see this oh good cop bad cop good cop bad cop that's what kyle and jack were supposed to be 
Kyle, Jack's supposed to be the voice of reason. Kyle's supposed to be the hothead. Because my mommy, my mommy's gone out of town. You ran my mommy away. I'm going to rush you. Now, we're talking a criminal. They don't know if he has a gun. They don't know none of that. And the funny thing is, Stark's demeanor is, are these Keystone cops thinking I'm buying this act? Because the to me, the acting was bad. No, 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 Kyle. No, no, I told you this is not this is not what we're here for. No, no, calm down. This is uh, obviously this has upset our whole family. My son, in particular, I'm thinking, oh my god. You know, my mother has gone. She couldn't. She did not even say goodbye. We're well, doggone it. Your mother may have left town. But now you know she's not dead. Am I supposed to believe she's not going to call you? See, what? No, you guys. And he and Stark looked at him and said, how do I know you guys haven't stashed her anywhere? Hmm. He has, this is not his first go round. This is a man that has been able to smuggle with the help of Dee Dee cash internationally and launder it. What makes you think he's that stupid? Really? And so Jack's like, you turned down my offer of, of, of paying you off, paying you the cash so you can leave before, but now that there's no chance of getting it from Diane, she's gone. I want to extend this offer again because me and my family need to get back to normal. Hmm. And he said, oh, you all want to pay me off to get me out of town so what, Diane could come right back? You know? And then when Jack says, so me and my family could get back to normal, I said, well, back to normal would be with Diane there, right? But in reality, if all Stark wants is his money, and he is a criminal, he really could care less where he gets it from. Because see, now he could easily look at Jack and say, this is how much she stole, but this is the amount it's going to take to get me to take the money and leave town. And double it. Double it. Is Diane worth that to the Abbots? Double it. Any criminal would double it and leave. Especially now that he knows Phyllis um, told the truth that, look, I have no proof that she was helping the feds at all. I made that up. I think she did, but I don't know. Okay. So we'll see where it goes with, with Stark. If he insists he's staying around, then it just hasn't come out that Diane is his wife. Oh no, I'm coming to get what's mine. And you mine, chick. <laughs> you know, See, that has not come out. I don't know if that is going to be the deal. I don't know if it is going to come out, but it possibly that. I mean, because we, we've had some comment comments in Comment Corner that they people think she's married to him, and I think so too. He's just holding that close to the vest right now, right? I will see. We, we shall see. But anyway, we've got uh, Summer and, and Kyle and Jack talking and then when people walk in the room they stop talking and this the whole nine yards and um, Kyle Kyle's back from of course Stash and Diane he comes in Summer so happy to see him but all he talks about is, my mother my mother was so sorry I didn't have to leave her now you have a four year old at home upset about his DD. And now daddy at Christmas time is on, on vacation on, on a business trip. You would think my first concern is going to be making sure my son is okay and happy, right? Uh, that's what I'm going to do. Make sure he's okay. But anyway, they go come back from start because Stark said, I'll think about it. Like, I'm, I'll think about it. So they get home and they're like, how do you think it went? And Jack says, well, you played your part well. And I'm thinking, oh my God, so transparent. You both are so transparent and out of your league with this criminal, completely out of their league. And so, um, but while they were gone, Summer went to the office. 
runs into Phyllis packing up stuff. She goes, mom, you're fired. What are you doing here? She goes, I'm clearing out my office, Summer. If you think I'm going to steal something, have security accompany me, but I'm clearing out my office. Now, realistically, that's Marchetti's office, right? What Phyllis would have to put in her box is Marchetti's property. Because I was watching her pack stuff. These are all files, right? These weren't her ledgers from the Grand Phoenix. <laughs> You know, she, this wasn't her personal stuff. Yeah, she, Phyllis was not packing up her stapler, even though that's still company property. She wasn't packing up her personal plants. She wasn't packing up her, she was legitimately loading this box full of company files. And I was like, well, okay, because I think you came in these doors with nothing, right, mama? then you really should be leaving with nothing. Uh-uh. So anyway, um, Summer is not going to get into it with Phyllis. She doesn't. She just, uh, they end up kind of having their mixed words. And Summer's like, you know, no, mm -mm, no. This whole Christmas has just been up in arms behind you bringing Stark here, period. So no, you know. And so Phyllis, um, she leaves. She comes barreling into uh, Crimson Lights in Phyllis style. And she like puts her hands on the counter and her head's kind of down. She's like, oh my God, like ready to blow. And we have Tucker still there because Ashley had just left him. You know, they had their little date. And um, he goes, ooh, bad day. And she looks over at him like, Who's talking to you? You don't mind your own business. And he's like, I'm just saying, you know, you might want to try any, some kind of like relaxation technique. And she's like, so she said something snipey as it's like, as if I want your advice, right? And so he's like, hey, I'm just saying. And so then Daniel walks into the coffee house. So Daniel walks in because he's happy. Earlier that day, he had a meeting with Lily and Devon. And they gave him the official green light. They're going to move on his platform. They're going to go, you know, with the whole project. Um, and they're like, do you have a, a team in place so that you all can, can get running? And he goes, well, not yet, because I couldn't get a team in place when I didn't have a yes, from, which made sense to me. How are you going to have a true team when... Chancellor Witness has not had not accepted the venture yet. So he goes, no, I will have a team and I will be up to speed now that we have a go. Right. And so they're like, well, we're, we're supporting you 100 percent. We're behind you. We, you know, whatever resources we need to offer with this, because we consider this to be a lucrative deal. Well, Daniel says, you know what, I, I really feel we should be able to do a a like a soft release, a soft um, conference, press com conference, letting the public know what's coming in March. And Devon says, March? That's like three months from now. Don't you think that's a bit ambitious, March? You don't even have your design team yet. And I was thinking, that is a little bit ambitious. And he goes, no. For what we can release in March or for what information we can put out to start a buzz, he goes, we will be, I will be ready. We will be ready for that. And you know what? Realistically, when you think of the gaming world, they do put out way in advance when they're releasing version Z, right? <laughs> you know, uh, I, we're releasing upgrade 2.20 in five six months from now right because they start doing that whole pre-sale crap and the game is not even coming out for six to eight months so he could be right there that you know no we need to start putting out a buzz so people start to say hey what's going to be happening over there and what we may need to look out for this start some little reddit groups and all kind of stuff right so they were like, well, let's let's see how things start to progress along they compromised Lily said well, you know what Let's table that. 
Let's see how things start progressing. And then we'll get back to whether we want to do a soft launch in March. And Daniel agreed at that because how could he not agree with that? That's sound business sense, right? So as soon as he said that and was talking, I thought, Phyllis, he's going to ask his mother to work for him. So he says, mom, you know, what are you doing here? And so she's looked at him and he says, uh-oh, well, look at what that smile on your face. Because she was like, <laughs> he goes, that smile almost looked like it's hurting. <laughs> He's like, what's going on? And so she's like, let's go out of bed. And she looked over at Tucker, <laughs> you know. So she and Daniel go to the patio. And he's like, okay, what's going on? And she's talking and she goes, I no longer work for Marchetti. Summer doesn't trust me. Now, mind you, she's not telling Daniel what she's done. She, He has no clue what was happening and what she's done. He just doesn't know. And so he's like, well, he had good news. And he was saying that he's he his uh, gaming platform has been uh, picked up by Chancellor Winters. It's a go. And Phyllis says, well, I'm so proud of you. I'm so, she's so happy for her son. And then Daniel said, now I have to build my team. She says, and I'm happy you're free. Because I need someone with your particular expertise. He says, you know how to build something from the ground up. He says, you know gaming. You're a gamer. And I completely forgot about that. Phyllis loves her video games, right? That used to be one thing she and Nick had in common is video games. He goes, you're a gamer. And you're a hacker. And she's like, shh, 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 shh. You know? He goes, well, you're a hacker from back in the day. He goes, so you know how to get this done. You're going to know. And he goes, I want you to manage that, the whole, you know, that whole team, that development process of that. And Phyllis was like, you know, I me, because your sister doesn't trust me. And he goes, I am not Summer. I don't think the way Summer thinks. I'm me. And you are exactly who I need. You. And I was happy for Phyllis because look, now this has nothing to do with Diane. This has nothing to do with Jabo. This is going to put her in a whole nother element where her skills, once again, because no, her skills were, were she did an excellent job with Marchetti's home division. And she did an excellent job with her hotel. Phyllis does a good job in anything she really gets into and puts her mind to doing. So she is going to help Daniel catapult this. And see, watch, as Summer realizes she is on the outs that her her uh, Abbott uh, involvement is going to be need to know. She's going to start feeling like an outcast and an outsider because Kyle's going to make her feel that way. And Diane, once she's back, is going to snub it in her nose and make her feel that way. Right? And Jack, for sure... It's going to look the other way if he even thinks Summer looks sad. No, she can't be looking sad because Diane is back. So every, all is good with the world, right? So first slap in the face. They're sitting down. I mean, Kyle is worried. I wonder how my mother's doing at the cabin. You know what? I'm thinking of going right back. And she goes, it's Christmas Eve. Kyle, wait. No, and I'm thinking, is it Christmas Eve? Boy, they sure are time warping, right? They're like, Kyle, it's Christmas Eve. And I'm like, well, you didn't have the dinner? Yeah. And I'm like, no, we're going to be on Christmas Eve for the next five days on The Young and the Restless. That's how they're about to play that, right? The next five days will be Christmas Eve. And he goes, if you all, she goes, you just got back here. And he, like she's thinking, and Harrison is, what? And he goes, 
As I was leaving, my mother had tears in her eyes. I can't bear the thought of her being there at that cabin alone. And Summer is looking at Kyle like, wait, what? And Jack is looking like, oh, no, poor Diane. Oh. And I'm like, Summer better have a backbone. And Summer and Jack goes, wait, but it's going to be dangerous. We don't even know if Stark bought our story, Kyle. I, I know how to, I know how to be careful. I know how to make sure I'm not following. I'm thinking, no, you don't. No, you don't, Kyle. Your con artist mother does, but you don't. Diane could come back to town in disguise and nobody would know she was there. They could even have Diane living in the Abbott Cool House in the back. No one would know she was there, right? So Summer, when he said that Summer looked, and him, I can't bear the thought of her being alone at Christmas. And Summer's looking like, well, what about me and your son? What about that, right? Kyle's not caring about that. Matter of fact, Kyle might slap Summer in the face and say, you know what? I'll take Harrison with me. So me, him, and my mom can have Christmas to get what? Watch. Because he sure didn't say, no, we're going to go for an Abbott family Christmas. You know, they could have easily booked a flight anywhere. Next, they could have booked a flight to New York and then drove to the cabin. They could have done a whole, you know, but no, Kyle's going to go by himself. And I looked at that and I thought, you want to know what's going to happen? Jack's going to say, no, you know what, Kyle? You need to be here for Christmas for Harrison. You need that. I'll go to the cabin so Diane won't be alone. I'll go look at, I'll go be there for her. Now, mind you, can't Jack be followed too? I mean, whatever, you guys. Fine, whatever, you know. And if Jack is the one that goes, that's where him and Diane are going to sleep together for the first time, right there at that cabin right there. If Kyle goes, that's going to be the beginning of the end of his marriage to Summer because he's going to choose the most important holiday of the year to be with Diane over his wife and son if he doesn't take the boy with him. Summer's already on the outs with her mother. It's not like, what would she even do in the Abbott family house without Kyle and Harrison or without even Kyle? So yeah, then she's going to start to to think about some of the things that her mother had been saying to her in her ears because she said, let me tell you something, what, what Diane is going to do. She's going to worm her way into Kyle's heart and then she's going to slowly put a wedge summer between you and Kyle. She's going to make situations where Kyle has to choose. And Summer's like, Kyle will always choose me. She goes, she's going to make situations where Kyle has to choose and Kyle's going to choose her. Phyllis told Summer that. Summer's like, please, me and Kyle, look, no, uh-uh, that ain't happening. It's going to happen. It's already happening. They're already excluding Summer from a lot of the information already. Already let Diane take Summer to the emergency room, go accompany him versus his wife, Kyle, uh, little Harrison's mother, you know, to Harrison to the recovery room. Already it's happening right in front of her face. The world is revolving around Diane. And it has since the day she got back in town. So face it, face it, super girl. You're going to be happy and quite alone. And then what are you going to say? Because your mother is happy to say, I told you so. But if, if Kyle wants to do the right thing, he'll say, you know what? Let's all go. Me, you will tell the family we're going to go to New York for Christmas. And then they just go to the cabin, but we'll see. That's that's too much like right, right? That's too much like 
putting your actual family, your wife and child first. Because they should be. Mother, yes, that's your mama, but she's second. It's wife and child. Really, child and wife. <laughs> child and wife. Unless that's you, both of you, your child, then it's wife and child. But anyway. Um, so anyway, let's go to Comet Corner. Comet Corner, we only have two or really 1.5. Medora says, Sally is trying too hard to prove she's moved on. Glad Adam didn't uh, do the jealous game. I'm so happy too. Adam act like he wasn't even phased. And she's like, well, okay. And I'm thinking, nah. He's like, I'm happy for you, Sally. I'm happy for you. And then Robin says, Adam agreed with Sally that after their last uh, sexual encounter, it is over. Glad they are moving past this relationship. So me too, because once Adam finds anyone else, anyone else, then Sally's going to be doing double takes. Like case in point, and this is who they need to need to to temporarily mix together: Adam and Audra. Now Audra's not mama material as far as stepmama material for Connor. But Ad, uh, Audra uh, will be a good stop gap, a good gap relationship until Adam gets into another one, right? Because what Audra would be doing is trying to make Noah jealous, really. So whatever. But Sally would look at Audra because Audra is a little bombshell. Gorgeous, curvy, shapely, confidence for days. See, Sally can stand up on her own, but you can tell Audra is a hurricane. She's conniving. She's devious, underhanded. She's a good match for Sally. Perfect match for Sally. And Audra would have fun doing it. So I'm hoping because Adam would actually have fun watching it. <laughs> Adam would just be loving what Audra is going to bring to the table. So if here's the deal, everybody. If we see, because see, Adam and Audra have never crossed paths yet, right? If we see her come into society and sit at that bar, mm -hmm. Or she's in Noah's club sitting in a corner and Adam comes in. They're going to put those two together. I really believe it'll be more like a society, a society thing at the bar. You notice nobody goes to the Grand Phoenix anymore at the bar. Remember, everybody used to be coming to Phyllis's bar, right? Mm -mm. Nobody, nobody. So, or Audra comes into Crimson a lot. Maybe Adam will accidentally bump into her. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, miss. Spilled, spilled my coffee. Sorry. Somehow, if they put them together two times in one week, two times, they're going to be the, they're going to be a couple. That's just the way soaps are. They got to make all kind of plays. Oh, oh, bumped it. Oh, I bumped it. Yeah. OK, you haven't seen him all this time. You've been in Genoa City, but we'll see. So anyway, everybody, that's it. That's it for Comic Corner on The Young and the Restless. I will be back on Monday. Let's see what's going to happen. I think my, it'll probably be a short, uh, it shouldn't be a short week because Christmas is next Sunday. So it should be a full week, but we don't know how taping went. Uh, but everybody have a phenomenal, phenomenal weekend.